Our next speaker, are we on the mic here? Yeah. I'm having a problem hearing myself. Our next speaker is an old friend of mine, uh, quite an interesting individual. Um, Judd Weiss uh, is multi-talented. You will not recognize all of his abilities just by hearing him speak for a few minutes because he, when he speaks, you can't quite lock in on what his real angle is. His real angle is get crap done, make money, live well. It's that simple, but he really focuses on that. So he runs many companies. He brings people together also. He set, organizes huge events with political figures, writers, new age thinkers of, of technologies and cities and politics. And he brings all those people together so that they can meet in ways they normally wouldn't have a chance to meet. I am very happy to call him one of my personal friends. Please give a round of applause for Judd Weiss. It's yours. Thank you, Reichardt, for that really nice introduction. I'm honored to be on the stage with Reichardt. That guy is amazing. So uh, I'm uh, speaking tomorrow at the Libertarian Party of California State Convention, and I figured that I might as well just give the same talk here because I'm doing the one weekend. But uh, I am a libertarian. You know, I respect myself and I respect others, and I, I would like there to be less government encroachment in our lives and uh, for us to reclaim our lives and live it the way we like. So. I want to, I'm going to be speaking about how libertarians can better communicate with the outside world because God knows they need that help. In fact, any, any group of intellectuals is going to need a little bit of help connecting with non-intellectuals. And uh, so, so the way that I'm, I'm going about it, I'm going about it as a salesman. I sell things. I'm, and being a salesman, you need to connect with people. So there's a lot of things we can do to better connect with the outside world. but. Uh, there's also some uh, tough love that needs to be said to, to libertarians. Uh, as a friend, you know, friends tell people straight what's, what's good and what they need to do to improve. So I'm going to start with that. Uh, so look, imagine you're selling your car. And how do you think it's going to impact your sale if you need to, while you're selling the car at the exact same time, you're uh, explicitly explaining to your buyer that he's an idiot? I mean, because that's what we're doing. Uh, our approach has been lousy. We're, 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 we're making this not some, we're, we're turning people away. We're, we're becoming very fiery. And you know what? Not everybody's a salesman. It's okay. We're capitalists. We believe in the division of labor. Engineers and inventors aren't necessary, necessarily salesmen. And that's perfectly fine. But I would like more people to be better at sales. I'd like more people to be better at connecting. So I'm going to uh, speak a little bit about what they can do. I mean, look, the truth is, not everybody's going to be a philosopher king. Some people are plumbers, some people are doctors. You know, when I, uh, when I turn on my car, I don't know how the engine connects with the pistons and the drivetrain and the wheels. I just want the thing to move when I turn it on. And just because I don't know the technical specifics of somebody's uh, intimate knowledge of that world that they care about so much, doesn't mean that I'm an idiot just means that, you know, I've got other things on my mind. So not everybody's going to care about philosophy and politics. And that's okay. And we've got to accept that, especially if we're going to need numbers. And right now, we're $15 trillion in debt as a nation. The police state is increasing. We have more incursion in our lives from government raids for drugs or throwing away our shampoo and mouthwash at the airport. It's just, it's just getting ridiculous, and it's getting worse. More people are depending on government. We really can't screw around anymore. If we, we need to get this message out, and it's important we stop bickering, and we start focusing on what we need to do. So, so my opinion is that the fundamental problem is not the system. It's not uh, power-hungry politicians. It's not, uh, it's not uh, the fact that Keynes is taught in all our universities. It, it, it's not even the appeal of free stuff. The problem is us. Blaming all of those external factors is like blaming gravity for milk spilling from an overturned bottle. Of course those things are going to happen. But what are we going to do about it? Well, how are we going to approach those situations that we have to deal with? So what we, we, there's a lot we can do, but what we can't do is remain stubborn and arrogant with our failing approach. So what we need to do is we need to fundamentally change how we think about other people, how we view them. And we, we're going to need to view them differently. And what we have to understand is that People are not ideas, and ideas are not people. If we're fighting ideas, we're fighting ideas, but we don't need to fight people. 
and, and what we need to do is treat people as potential allies. It's a fundamentally different approach to dealing with other people that, that disagree with us. Uh, so how, how do you deal with people that, that are potential allies? Instead of, uh, you, you deal with opponents, you have to fight. If you're in a fight, you gotta fight. But if you're not dealing with opponents and you're dealing with potential allies, you gotta persuade them. So, so you need to make your message Instead of antagonistic, you want to be, uh, you know, you got to make it attractive, simple, something that people can catch on to, that, that, that they're excited about. So think of it this way. If somebody's got a choice between going to a really cool hot party or debating with a bunch of angry, awkward nerds, what do you think they're going to want to do? You know, what, what, what's appealing to them? But that's the choices that we're giving to people, and that's what we're expecting them to want to do. So what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to do is, is, as best I can, is just you know make it beyond just ideas. I have uh, I throw a lot of events and I just keep a cool, attractive crowd, and and I make a very comfortable atmosphere for people to discuss different ideas, where there's no judgment. You know, you you, you can disagree, you can not care. In fact, if you disagree, you're you're welcome because it makes the Q and A more interesting. I'll have a speaker and that's more fun. So. So there's a few things we can do uh, that makes things more attractive. One, we can make ourselves more attractive. We can work on ourselves. We can be more aware of people. We can be more aware of, of, of you know, others and where they're at. We can be more tolerant of ourselves and others. We need to be not delusional. We need to be aware of where we really are as people, where we stand at the moment. and. And we need to be aware that other, and more accepting of where we actually are. If we're not good at communicating, we have to understand that and change it. And if we're more accepting of ourselves, we can be more accepting of others. We can be accepting that people aren't necessarily perfect. They don't understand certain things. They might be a little bit misguided, but that's okay. Because we were too. You know, ideas are not people. Once we, we once held views, we don't hold now, and we might not in the future. Things change. People change. So we, we can accept that. And, you know, another thing to make ourselves more attractive is just be more productive, responsible people. You know, we got our shit together. We're doing things in our lives. People want to be associated with people that are actually accomplishing things. So fo we, we, we can focus on those areas. And also another thing that's really important that's very attractive is integrity. Being true to your values. I'm not talking about dumbing down anything or, or diluting anything. And I think libertarians excel in that area. In fact, I think that that's one of the most attractive things about, for instance, the Ron Paul campaign. There's a politician that actually has a lot of integrity and people are just excited about it. So we're good there. We don't really need much help in the integrity department, but it's not enough. We need more than that. We need to be able to connect on other levels with, with a lot more people. So, so uh, we got to keep our message a little bit simpler. Religion's got a few things that, I'm not a religious person, but it's got a few things going for it. They've got the Ten Commandments. It's very simple. You know what to do. I think libertarians, they, they, they can boil down everything into one commandment and just keep it very simple. Live and let others live. And then not only, it's not just a commandment commanded by God. We've got the source code. You can explore it. There's a whole philosophy behind it. You know, we're independent beings. We can think for ourselves. We should live how we like. Uh, and, and keep everything very simple for the outside world. Another thing we need to do is be non-threatening. Now that's a big challenge. We're, we're talking about ending the state as people know it, ending the programs. I don't have the solutions for how we're going to tailor that message, but that's an area we need to focus on. How do we make our message non-threatening and comfortable? And, and we've got to really be clear about what are we offering people? You know, because if, if everybody else is offering free stuff taken from others, what are we offering? Do we have something attractive to offer? I think we do. We're offering your life is yours, and you can live it in a more exciting, more prosperous world. And I think if we tailor that pack, that message, we can really make that really attractive. It is attractive. It's valuable. We're offering dignity, peace, and prosperity. These, these are things that, that connect with people. So how am I, you know, in, in pol politics is not allowed to be discussed at parties. You know, it, it causes tension. People get uncomfortable. But I'm setting up parties that are pretty attractive that, that discuss politics. I'm breaking the rules. Not only that, but I'm interrupting the party to have a political speaker. And the reason I'm doing it is because I'm, I'm, I'm making a very comfortable area. You don't have to agree. You don't have to even care about this. You can come for just a free cocktail. But if you disagree, 
no one's gonna, you don't have to change your opinion, but you're gonna be exposed to some new ideas. And, and you're gonna meet some people that are into it. And by doing that, it's allowing people to drop their guards a little bit and, and check things out. And they don't have to change their minds, but, but they're a lot more willing to do so when we're not calling them, calling them out as statists. If we're, we're calling them out as people and, and you have ideas and we've got, some, we've got some things you might wanna hear about. So this is not about being soft. I'm not talk, saying these things because I want to be more soft. I, I, I'm saying these things because we need, we need strength, we need numbers, and if we're gonna throw punches, I want them to do some damage. This is about being more effective. We need numbers, we're gonna need to be able to uh, achieve more, and in order to do so, we need people. But we have to understand that this is, a, this is a war, but it's a war of ideas, and it's not a war of people. We gotta focus on the right targets, arm up, grow some balls, go kill them all. But make, make sure that we understand that it's not a war of people. As far as people are concerned, we're in a sales campaign. Make our product pitches as simple and attractive as possible and go sell to them all. That's what I have to say. Thank you. Okay, cool. I've got five minutes. You can ask me some. Sure. Thanks. thanks. I appreciate when you look over the plaque, though, the points the Libertarian Party made, well, you can agree with some of them, it's always taken to the ideological maximum. And so how do you kind of instill some sort of the best is the enemy of the good? Right. Repeat that to, to the mic. Right. So he says that most Libertarian, there's a Libertarian platform, and if you don't accept the whole thing, you're often not accepted. Yeah. Uh, right? Well, right, I think that's a problem that libertarians have. They have to understand that ideas fester in people. People don't just accept everything or not. Sometimes that happens, but we're limited in small numbers because we're keeping a lot of people out. We're trying to protect the ideas, but in doing so, we're protecting our ideas from spreading. So we, we, I have people that come to my parties and now they're saying they're libertarian, but they don't understand the whole thing. They're not even for necessarily privatization of schools. They might even support healthcare. They don't understand it in, in, in total, but they, I, they like the idea of live and let others live. And, they, and, and, and as they start to uh, let that idea grow within them, they start applying it to other things and we have to be more tolerant to that. So we, it, we can keep it as a small, uh, perfect unit or we can let it grow and spread because if we're going to go into the outside culture, we're going to have a lot more disagreements from the general public and we're just going to have to accept that. Any other questions? Scott. Right, so he's talking about the Tea Party and the Occupy Wall Street, where in some sense they sound like they're opposites, and in a lot of senses they're very similar. They're bo both for you know, stopping the bailouts, and they have some, some overlapping goals. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you know, one of the problems that I have with libertarians is they fight with people that they agree 98% on, and they, they find that 2% that they disagree on, and they fight to the end on that. And as far as I'm concerned, we need, I'll work with somebody that I agree 50% on, in fact, I'll work with somebody I agree 2% on, on that area that I, I agree with. We're, 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 we're pushing forward the same goals. And ideas uh, flow better between allies than opponents. So if you treat other people as allies in certain causes, it's much more likely that they're gonna catch on to some of the other things that, you're having, that you have to say. So as far as I'm concerned, yeah, we should make much more alliances, but make, make it clear where we differ. Make, there, there's no need to, to we can make it clear where we differ but without being antagonistic. Any other questions? Yes. Be a lot louder, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, so uh, we need to be more accepting of the fact that we're not perfect ourselves. We need to look in the mirror ourselves. Sometimes it's, it's us that, that's, it's like, it's like th th we have to realize that it's not so attractive when our outreach message is a, a socially awkward nerd yelling at people to wake up sheeple. That's not attracting people. And if, if we realize where we are and what we're doing and it's not working, uh, 
we, we, and we, without judgment, we can just realize that it's not effective and, and we need to change it. And then, and then from that, we can be also more tolerant of others, the fact that they're not perfect either. We, we don't have to pretend that, we don't need that arrogant, stubborn arrogance that we're doing everything perfectly because we're not. And just be more aware of that and also be more tolerant of others. Uh, any other questions? All right. Well, yeah, sure, Mike. Okay, is there other areas where you can work with Repeat the question. Like particular issues? Are there particular issues where you can work with people that are not libertarians? Yes. Absolutely, that's what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm saying we, we need to be much more cooperative. We need, to, we need to form more alliances. Differentiate ourselves. There's differences in the marketplace of ideas. We make it clear where we are. But, but as allies, our ideas are able to flow to them much better than as opponents. And so, yes, absolutely, in, in multiple areas, too, too numerous to name. Sure. Okay, I think that's all my time. Thank you guys so much. It was great talking to you. Thanks, Thank you, Judd.